In this video, let's talk about how to get some stock data, more specifically, historical stock data to Excel. Now, I did already cover in a separate video how to get real-time stock data to Excel, and I'll link to that video below this video so you can watch that video if that's what you wanna do. But in this one, we're gonna get specifically historical stock data, and we'll look into a function in Excel called stock history. Now, to be able to use this function, you're gonna need at least two parameters here, stock and stock date. So let's go ahead and start by entering those. So I'm gonna enter a stock and a date for which I'm trying to get the data for. And then I'll go next to this and do equals and we'll do stock history. As stock, we're gonna provide this, comma, and as start date, we're gonna provide that, close parentheses, hit enter, and you can see I got value error. Now, if I'm getting value error, that means this was probably not a date where the market was open, so that's the reason I would be getting this value error. Let's try to change this to a different date, let's say, October 6th, and that also gets me a value error. I'm gonna go October 7th, and hopefully that gets us to a working day. And at this point, we do get our data. You can see as of October 7th, that was this much. Now, in case the same ticker could be available in multiple exchanges, then you need to also provide the exchange you're getting that from. So if we look at this list, these are the available exchanges we have. So you can see this is the exchange and this is the identifier of that exchange you can see here. So you can see these are the available exchanges here. And if I scroll down here so you can see what's available, And if I keep scrolling down, at some point, we're gonna get to United States. And you can see some of the US exchanges here. So I'm gonna keep scrolling down in case you're interested in seeing the full list. So that's pretty much all we have. Now let's look at some of the US exchanges. So for example, NASDAQ. So if I want to get that from NASDAQ, this is the exchange identifier. So I would need to basically go here and start by entering the exchange followed by a colon and then the ticker. And if I would enter, that's gonna get me this data now for that particular ticker from this particular exchange. So if I go back here and we'll look at, for example, New York Stock Exchange, this would be the identifier for that. So I'm gonna go here and if I paste this here, now it's looking for Apple stock in this exchange and obviously that doesn't exist, so we get value error. Now if I go here and change it to Coca-Cola ticker, something like that, we should be able to actually get the data. Now, if you also wanted to get some ETF numbers, you should be able to do that. If you go back here, see we have this, this one right here. And if I copy this exchange identifier, go back here, and here we'll do something like SPY. So that would be something like SP500 equivalent, we can get that information too. Now, by default, when I started here, I chose to provide the actual stock and then the start date right here. Now we can also provide end date on this. So let's go here and enter a different date or let's just update this to maybe go last year and we'll go until, let's say this year. Now again, you can see here, I'm getting a value error 
probably this last year was like a Sunday or something. So if I change this to a different date, at some point we'll get a date where we have the data. Apparently that was probably Saturday, then Sunday, and this is probably Monday. So at this point now, if I go back to this and after this start date, I do a comma, and then as an end date, I provide this. If I'd enter, I'm gonna get this. So I'm gonna open this so you can see. So it's gonna give me this list of dates and it's gonna give us how much that particular ticker was on that particular date. And so it's gonna give you all of these. Now, when you give it a date range, if I change this to one of those dates that used to be closed, like for example, 10-7, at this point, because we give it a range, you know, it will just start from this available day and go from that. So now it's gonna start from here and basically continue from this day. Now, by default, what it's gonna do, it's gonna give you every day. Now, if I go back here and go after this, I can do a comma and we can provide whether we want this daily, weekly, or monthly. So daily is your default. If I do weekly, now it's gonna give us weekly numbers. If I go back here and update this instead of one, two, two, which is monthly, it's gonna give us every month, as you can see. And notice how it started from October 1st, even though I gave it October 7th, so it starts from that month, basically. So then comma, then we have this header arguments. Now, if I don't provide that argument, see by default, we have this data points and we have date and close on top here. Now, if I go up here and do a comma, then we can do no header. And that way it will not give us those headers on top. So it's just the actual data itself, as you can see. And then finally, other than that, if I do a comma, I can also choose what particular properties I want about that particular ticker. So in this case, see, I can get just close, for example. So if you don't provide anything, then what you basically get is the date and the close. But what I can do here, I can choose let's say this one. And if I'd enter, now we're not getting the date, we're simply just getting the close amount. Now I can go back here and then I can do another comma and then I can basically choose the properties I want in the order I want. So if I want, let's say close first, and then I want maybe open second, I can provide that, hit enter, and that's gonna give me that. Now then I can go back here and after this I can add another comma and then maybe we'll also do the date. And if I enter, now date will be last because we chose it to be last. Now if I wanted date to be first, then what I would have done here, I would go before this, see right here when we do a comma, I would choose a date first, comma, and then the other two after that and then it's gonna start with a date first and then it's gonna provide the rest after this. And of course, if you do it for a different stock, you're gonna get it for that stock. So for example, let's just go back and update it to maybe like Apple and see what happens. So for Apple, we're gonna choose NASDAQ and that's gonna be NASDAQ and Apple stock and there you go. Now, if you wanted it to always get your data until the last available day, as an end date, you can always do today. For that, you can either go here and just type equals today, like this, which would give you dynamically updating date for today, or you can just embed it in your formula directly. So I can go here in the formula and here instead of B2, which is the end date, I can just type today open close parentheses, and then I can remove this because no longer I'll be using that. And basically I'd be getting starting from this day until today. Now, as you can see, when I get this data, it starts from the earliest available date and it goes to latest available date. Now, if you wanted to have latest on top, you can sort this data. So I can take this and put this inside of sort function like so, and then 
I'm gonna go here and add a comma, and that's gonna ask us for sort index, what column we wanna sort by, which could be one in this case. So I'm gonna type one. The first column is dates. Now, if you chose your date to be the third column, you would have done three here, comma. And then finally, this will be ascending, descending. So by default ascending, I'm gonna double click this negative one option and that's gonna make it descending. So let me actually zoom out a little bit so you can see this whole thing on a single screen. So you can see now it's the same data sorted in descending order by date, meaning the latest one is gonna be on top, the earliest one is gonna be all the way down. And finally, the last thing I wanna go over, what if you simply just wanna get that stock as of a particular date? So if I go here and do like 10-1, 2023, and then I'm going to delete this and start over. So I'll do equals stock history. And again, point to the stock number comma. And as a date, I'm going to do this one right here. So at this point, if I close parentheses, hit enter, assuming the market was open on that day, it would give me something but you can see it wasn't open, so I get a value. The same way if I do like January 1st, the market would not be open on January 1st, even if it was like a Monday or a Tuesday because it's a holiday, so it's gonna be closed. So therefore I'm gonna get value at this point. For cases like this, you have a couple of options. Maybe you just want to ignore this error in case this is an error. And for that, you could just do like if error around this, go after this whole thing, do a comma and double quotes. So basically that means just give me a blank in case the market was closed on that date instead of giving me an actual number. So that's one way you can deal with this. The other way you might wanna deal with this is that if the market was not open, you might wanna get whatever the last open date was. So for that, if I just go back to this stock history as it was like this. Well, we're gonna have to go basically a little backwards to see when it's open. So for example, if I just do equals, take this and do like minus three, for example, that would be three days before this. And then if I go back here and here as a start date, I'm gonna provide this comma, as an end date, I'm gonna provide this, which is the actual date that I'm interested in. And if I had enter, now, if you wanted to, you could go maybe like a little more than three days, maybe four days, I suppose to be safe. Now, at this point, when we get this data, the last one is the one that you would actually want, which is this 129.93. So what I'll do, I'll just add a couple of more parameters here. First, I'm gonna do a comma. For this parameter, I really don't wanna change it, so I'm just gonna go a comma here. So I don't want any headers on this, so I'll do no headers. That will take care of removing that top part. Now, at this point, I basically just wanna get whatever the last one is. If it was an actual open date, it would give me that date, or in this case, it's gonna give me December 30th. So what I can do, I can just put this inside of a function take, open parentheses, and then here after comma, to get the last one, I'm gonna do minus one as a position. And that would give me the last item from that particular list, which would tell me basically it was December 30th. As of that date, we got this much. Now at this point, you might want to also embed this in the formula because right now what I'm doing, I'm pointing to this B2 cell and B2 cell is really just this B1 minus four. So I'm gonna just copy that, go back here instead of this B2, I'm gonna delete that and paste it here, which is basically that date minus four days before. And then I can get rid of this and this is my formula. And assuming you only just want the amount, you don't want to see the date, you can also just go back here and write inside of this stock history, add a comma, and then as properties, you'll choose only close to not have the rest of those properties like date and stuff like that. And if I hit enter, 
here is that value. And at this point, you can list the date for which you want to get this and the ticker. And of course, if you have more of these, you can just drag it down. So for example, let's also add SPY here as an example. So I'll go here, grab the exchange, go here, paste it here, SPY, and then maybe as of this date. And of course, I can just take this and drag it down now, and we should be getting our number. And there you have it. That should cover pretty much everything you need to know about stock history function, how to be able to get the data you actually want for different stock numbers to Excel for whatever dates you want. And again, like I said, if you just want real time data, I have the video in description. You can watch that. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.